welcome you to Conversations and Coffee today on this 18th day of November, 2021. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator of the program. We're here virtually by Zoom, brought to us by virtue of Lindsay Lasanti, graduate of Otterbein University and linking us together from the Cultural Arts Center in downtown Columbus. Katie Fisher, graduate of Columbus College of Art and Design, creatively gets the word out on our website for our beloved Cultural Arts Center. We have a great faculty, staff, with director Jeffrey Martin's leadership, bringing arts to the city. We're delighted to have with us today, Brian Regal, our main gallery artist whose exhibit is entitled Out of Tunes, composed of mixed media with reclaimed morphed musical instruments. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. You call, you call us to the genius of transformation, humor, expertise, talent. We appreciate that. You tell us your art is a tribute to what was and a chance to add a new perspective of what is. Brian graduated from Ohio State University and has a master's degree from the School of Creative Arts at the University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Brian shares that his art is a tribute to what was and a chance to add new perspective to what is. He deconstructs beloved objects and reimagines their pieces and parts in ways that breathe new energy into discarded and stagnant items. His work in our gallery show builds on his musical instrument series, and his hope is that it will create an emotional connection for viewers as his audience. Brian asks that we remember our favorite concerts, artists, and experiences with music. I took some time to think about my favorite. I was living in New York at the time Godspell opened at the Cherry Lane Theater. And I took my class and we loved it. Brian's work is displayed around Columbus from the White Castle Obelisk to the original Short North location to the life-size cow at Cameron Mitchell's Bud Dairy. Brian has a passion for creating sculptures and murals and employing a variety of media ways to generate homage pieces that remind us of our history together and shared experience. His enormous murals at Quest and the Dublin City Municipal Building show, which I've seen, it's amazing. The evolution of the Columbus's landscape Brian's art reflects the diverse set of skills and types of media he taught as a longtime high school art teacher. His work is always experimental. He's energized by the challenge of creating unique representations of his clients' interests, values, or services. He uses discarded materials, repurposed objects, and a variety of methods to fuse diverse objects together to create meaningful pieces that evoke fe feelings of nostalgia, community, and belonging. Brian noticed how people threw away things rather than repurposing them. He, his relatives, who were farmers, transformed discarded items into heroic parts necessary to repair a machine. Now he repurposes discarded and found object into art and searching for incorporating interesting and unique pieces for his art. And it can be as exciting for him as finishing a new creation. Brian shares that although much of his current work is client-based, he finds time to create for his own pleasure. He's passionate about incorporating broken or discarded mus musical instruments into his personal art. The purpose of the past instruments was to entertain with beautiful sound, and he attempts to harness the residual creative energy and make something visually exciting. Brian, thank you for sharing this excitement and this beauty with us. 
And the opening of your show will be tomorrow night, Friday evening from six to eight, so we can see this. Take it away. Hmm? Okay, well, I don't know what to say now that you've uh, said all that there, but uh, uh, yeah, I am very excited about this show. Um, I, you know, I don't think I've ever exhibited in such a large space and it's a gorgeous, you know, building um, with traffic that goes through for a lot of different purposes. Um, so I think, I think it looks great. I, I spent all day yesterday trying to figure out exactly where I wanted to put things and had some help from my wife, Lisa, and, and figuring that out. A friend of mine, Brian, came in to help me hoist some of the larger sculptures. And uh, I think I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm excited to have that opening and let other people see it. Yeah, we look forward to it. Yeah, we can take a look now, too, if we want to yeah, see some good. of the items. Good. Okay, here we go. So do you want me to talk about these items then? Is... Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is a, a very large version of a uh, turntable that was uh, used for DJs since the 1970s. Uh, it's a Techniques 1200. Um, and so I recreated it about, I don't know, five or maybe eight times its original size. So you can't really get a sense of scale here. And then it has a uh, hologram projector on the inside. So this is still right here, but uh, basically it's, it looks like it's a spinning record, um, but it is, uh, it, I guess it's a two-way mirror is what I would say that the record is. And so you see images that are of um, influential and early hip hop artists that, uh, you know, have been paved the way for other people. Um, so you pretty much have to stand in front of it for about five minutes to, to get the full gist. And is that hanging from the wall? As it yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, I, if I, you looked at a, a real techniques turntable, it's pretty darn similar. I tried to, this was something I used. I DJed for a little while uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. And this was like the, you know, premier turntable um, for DJing. And, uh, very expensive. I could only afford one for a while and then got another one used. So, um, and since I've sold them and I miss it a little bit, so I had to make a, Super size version. Mm -hmm. it, and this little plaque in the corner was that added by you later on? I see uh, your last name. Yes. Yeah, so instead of techniques, it's tech regal. You know, I don't want to copyright infringement. Now it's it's not a functional turntable. Obviously, uh, there's no records that size because uh, the record itself is, uh, I think, about thirty inches. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the uh, tech regal brand is my own. <laughs> <laughs> awesome it is awesome hip-hop cool. yeah i don't think you get the gist of that without you know being there in person and this goes with that series as well because i you know created a series that i uh, felt was kind of the i don't know the beginnings of the hip-hop movement it's something i've been very interested in for a long time and so this is a supersized boom box um because you know i would say at that point, most most of my friends and I and people are you know all over the place used a boombox that you could portable you know move around and if you had like the best boombox that was a, a big deal. So this is like the king of all boomboxes. It's uh, and um, like the cassette player is not actually a cassette player. It's a, uh, a Betamax player because that's a lot bigger. Um, it's got all kinds of parts from different machines. Uh, different electronics, like an eight track player. Um, it's got some of our actual boom box parts. The uh, speakers are actually um, LP records. They're not speakers. They just are made to look like speakers. So hmm. um, it does not play music. I, I felt like it, I couldn't do it justice with the, uh, you know, for the size of what it is, but it does uh, light up and do some kind of lighting tricks. Ah. So. It's a work of art. And it's actually built on top of an old television, like 
big screen TV that didn't work anymore. So uh, I took off the screen and it lights. That's what lights it as well as some LED lighting that you can use a remote control to change the patterns and stuff. How long does it take you to collect all of the like pieces parts to make a piece like this? Because you're saying like <laughs> there's so many different parts. Yeah. Well, uh, that is a uh, lifelong uh, collection for a lot of times. So some of the things, you know, people donate things. Sometimes I get it from garage sales or flea markets or my mother-in-law is an antique dealer and cleans out houses. Uh, and so sometimes it'll be items that they can't sell or that we're going to get thrown away. Um, so I save things from the, the landfill. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, a, I guess, a hoarder with a purpose is what I would say. I have a shed full of stuff. And somehow I know all everything that I have there. It stays in my, my mind. Uh, and I just like, I know when I have the right time for it, I, I get it out, dig it out. So it's, it's well sorted. I can find things pretty easily. Mm. That's impressive. I would never be able to keep track. <laughs> okay. Oops, I'm really zoomed in now. Uh, oh. It doesn't want to go on to the next one. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so this is this is kind of goes with that series as well, uh, as well as the other uh, morphed instrument series. And and actually, the reason I connected those two, uh, the first two, is I felt like that those were kind of musical instruments uh, in their own right, because there's people who now make music on turntables by, like, the turntablists, it's a, uh, you know, a technique of scratching where you're creating, like, a whole new song uh, from scratch, literally, uh, and and it's piecing things together by remixing, uh, and we used to do that with cassette tapes on boom boxes as well but uh um so this is uh you know a turntable slash guitar it's supposed to look like it, you know it, it obviously it, uh i would think at least obviously it doesn't function but it has um uh, a cross fader which is uh something you use in, in djing if you're going back and forth one record to another and like the uh the tuning uh knobs are actually like uh knobs from a, a mixing board and there's other, you know, knobs and adjustments from mixers or turntables. Um, mm. So, and the the record that's on there is a uh, Herbie Hancock uh, Rocket, which was like uh, considered one of the first records where they scratched uh, Grandmaster DST. I believe was known for ah. what he did on that record. It's amazing simply to gaze at the record. <laughs> it's so beautifully placed in the musical music instrument, huh? Yeah, the turntable uh, platter is, you know, on there as well. It, um, it at one point I thought I'd, I'd make it so it could turn. It looked like it would play, but uh, I couldn't. When it sits on the wall, the needle will stay in place. So. Oh. Uh, that one I call Headbangers Ball, uh, and it was it's supposed to look like kind of like a heavy metal type guitar. And there was a MTV show called Headbangers Ball that, uh, since it has like balls on it, has ball bearings and a mirror ball kind of thing. Uh, so that was uh, kind of the idea behind that. And uh, so some of the items, I mean, there's all kinds of things on there. I don't know if. You know, it's almost like a search and find of what you can, you know, come up with. But uh, well, you can see through this. One too. It's clear. Yeah. Tell, us some tell us some of those parts. Uh, some of them, uh, I believe. I see. I can't. You can't see me pointing at things here. But there's. Uh, yeah, Lindsay. Um, for you. Mm -hmm. you. Can, can I can use a cursor? Right? I can. I can like zoom in, and you just tell me. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, so some of them I don't necessarily even remember what they're from but um if you if you zoom back out a little bit i can yeah. at the you know, like the the neck of it is actually a very large pepper shaker i believe uh or grinder um and then uh 
there is parts from uh, computer hard drive. There is, um, I guess, uh, I don't know if they're clarinet parts. Uh, there's there's a giant uh, bearing at the top, like a wheel bearing. Uh, maybe typewriter parts. I honestly, I it's been a while since I made that one, so I don't know. But sometimes I, I a lot of times I'll take things apart and just put things that look kind of alike in bins. So I may have forgotten where it officially came from, but uh, in the center there, there's a clear area that you can see through um, with has ball bearings inside it. Uh, and then like the mirror ball kind of, uh, I think it's, I forget whether a gazing ball or something you'd find in somebody's yard. <laughs> so. Oh. What, can I ask what the, the circular piece down on the bottom? It almost looks you know, like I, a I don't I don't ball. know. It looks kind of like a telephone a rotary dial, but I don't I don't think it had it was part of a telephone or anything. I don't know where I got that anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody out there probably would be able to recognize it, but there's more bearings in it. There's a few ball bearing kind of things because they have the, the balls inside them and you know. Well, your mother is on with us, Adele is on with us. What does she think of this? Well, I like his artwork. I have various things hanging in my house, so I really like his artwork. Oh, but I, but I never know what he's going to put together, so <laughs> it's always a surprise. You love the surprise of it, huh? Yes, uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a beautiful piece. Uh, oh, too zoomed in. Let me zoom out, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, this one's called uh, QWERTY Shredder, uh, you know, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, like uh, on a typewriter. Um, <laughs> and uh, obviously it's a typewriter and guitar mixed together. Um, there's some other objects on there as well. But the idea is it's supposed to look like the, it's typing out like musical notes. Uh -huh. So it would be like you're typing in the, the music. Um, rather than playing strings i don't know um so yeah if you i guess if you zoom up on the uh the neck of the guitar a little bit you'll probably be able to tell there's musical notes there mm -hmm. uh, so instead of words it would be typing music notes that's great and then what's the material that the, the music notes are like punched into is it uh it's like a, a thin tin i believe uh-huh do you do you usually start with a guitar that kind of that gives you the idea for the piece or do you start with an idea and then find a guitar that kind of fits with the concept or both um i i usually start with uh, a pile of stuff that i like and that feels like it could fit together um so i have lots and lots of instrument parts that people have given me um uh, so i don't necessarily go looking for things as, as much I mean there's things I'm always looking for but until I you know compile stuff um, I don't know what I'm gonna make so like for instance one there's one that that we won't have a picture of on here um, that I uh, just made like the day before the show or I finished the day before the show um, because I had gotten a box of parts from a 1965 uh, uh, Plymouth Barracuda so I had like taillights and the uh, gauges and the, um, you know, cigarette lighter and all these, all these pieces. And, uh, so I said, you know, I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, that would fit great on a, a large acoustic guitar. Um, and so if you go to the show, you can see that piece, it's, uh, it plugs in and it, the taillights light up and, you know, all the gauges light up and everything. And, um, it just, it looked like it would fit perfectly. And I, and I, honestly, I was obsessed to, to put it together. It just felt like it was meant to be kind of, I don't know, it sounds kind of strange, but uh -huh. um, some things, they just feel like they, they look mm -hmm. like they fit. It's like a puzzle that isn't supposed to go together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I love what you've brought together in the type, old typewriter keyboard. It's just wonderful. Well, and some of these things were so precious, like typewriters, you know, oh, yeah. if you had a typewriter, at least when I was a kid, that was 
wow, you have your own typewriter, you know, and, and then looking at the, the parts of the typewriter and what all the, the technology that it took to make it function correctly. Uh, and of course, you know, hopefully you didn't break it because there's no way, you know, a regular person could fix a typewriter themselves if it's something was seriously wrong with it. And if you've ever taken one apart, they're really hard to take apart. They're very, very complicated. So, but the, the idea that they're all just junk now bothers me, uh, <laughs> you know, along with a lot of these other things, I, that's, that's kind of where this whole kind of thing started. These objects shouldn't be worthless, but unfortunately, you know, because we've come up with easier things or what are supposed to be better, I guess, uh, you know, a lot of times they are. Well, I can feel my fingers in that keyboard <laughs> and much more do you feel them because even looking at them you can just see your oh, yeah you, you had to have strong fingers you wear out that right. typewriter <laughs> especially that kind of mechanical one. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful piece i know my my mom was uh, somebody who used a typewriter a lot so that might be i don't know if this was your typewriter mom are you still there I'm still here, but it doesn't look exactly like it. But of course, it wouldn't look okay. like it now at all. I might have. That might have been Grandpa Regal's, but uh, it might have okay. been another one that somebody gave me. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can see it in your show tomorrow night. Yep. Yes. Great. Uh, that's a Nautilus horn. So I have a kind of fascination with the nautilus shell or shape the spiral uh i did a series of artworks kind of connected to that actually the bar behind me i don't know if like it's probably too dark to see but it's a giant nautilus shell uh, <laughs> i don't know if you can see that at all but oh well uh it's so that's a um, parts of a sousaphone and some other uh just instrument parts that are put together for that. You put them together into a masterful sculpture. Oh, That's what was that like putting that together, having it all fit? Um, well, curling the pipes, you know, uh, to the right size is difficult with that uh, because I don't have uh, the same tools that they do. I, I get a lot of stuff from a place called Buckeye Brass. A guy named Rob Phillips has really helped me out a lot. And I, you know, drool over their tools there because they can, they can do any of this kind of stuff um, with, with what they have. For me, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily willing to invest in the kind of equipment they have. So I have to uh, try my best not to crush the pipes when I'm bending them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's some trial and error there, but, uh, you know, uh, and I've learned a lot from things online and he's given me some tips, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it can be stressful if I'm trying to bend in ways that are not really meant to be. Well, you must be pleased with how this turned out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Beautiful. So this is called air guitar and uh, you know, the idea of it, it's uh, you blow into it and make music through that instead of uh, strings. And uh, this one I've had for a long time. This is the only one that's not for sale because it's kind of like the, it was the first one that I really made of this series that I liked. Um, and it was at the, uh, it won a, a best in show uh, and was at the um, Columbus Historical Society Museum for a while. So yeah, that's why it's not for sale, but there's kind of a, there's, there's a, a few of these that are kind of like air guitars, but uh, this one was the original. Mm. Mm. Will you talk through some of the pieces parts in this? I can zoom in or like, what? what um, well, I'm not as versed on all the instruments. There's people out there that would be able to tell you exactly what instrument parts they're from. But I, I believe we got saxophone parts. We've got a trumpet parts, um, obviously a guitar uh possibly some uh uh trombone parts uh, it could be anything because i a lot of the parts i get uh like 
from Buckeye Brass and a couple other places. I don't know what they were to start with. Like, I think there's a French horn part on here, but they, they give me just a big bin of like broken parts. So it's mm -hmm. like, who knows what it came from? Uh, but uh, that's, you know, to me, that's one of the fun things for viewers who are really into uh, a certain instrument or just instruments in general. They, you know, they look through and pick out a bunch of different, you know, oh, that's from this or, you know, try it's, it's like a, I don't know, a game of, like, uh, I don't know, the Highlights Magazine or wherever, where you're trying to find the little things in the picture. Um, there's also clock parts in there, the, all the little sprockets and uh, cogs and stuff. Hmm. Well, giving a persona to those little pieces, those pieces must be just delighted <laughs> to be part of this rather than at the bottom of a box, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like to think that. Oh, yeah. Exquisite. Um, so this is, uh, wow, I can't, does it say the name next to it on the thing you have? I, it's, that one's pretty new and I forgot what I called that. Um, Morphdalin or, or no, not, uh, or no. <laughs> shoot um i can't uh, i know uh, 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 well it's a uh, is it a dulcimer is that what the instrument's called yep. did somebody say yeah yep <laughs> somebody knows huh oh. well I, I to be honest i can't think of what the name of that is now um is that is that from Patrick? dulcimer that's what i called it adult dulcimer was what it was it's uh, a dulcimer it's, yeah, so it is a dulcimer and then piano parts that I, uh, and actually I retrieved those piano parts from the McConnell Center piano. Um, I had a show there a while ago. And uh, and I also, uh, uh, I my dad taught in that building, uh, which is now the McConnell Center. Oh. So um, it's kind of a, a neat thing um, that I had a lot of connections to that building. I, I grew up learning art in that building uh, when it was part of Worthington High School. So uh, those those piano keys and uh, foot pedals, I believe, are from their piano. And then uh, there's a some kind of a horn at the top and then like plumbing parts at the bottom. So, you know, I don't know how you'd play this one, but. <laughs> well, Patrick might know. He's a musician. Yeah, there's. Well, so people always ask me, can you play it? And my answer is yes with a lot of these, but you wouldn't like how it sounds. <laughs> so looks like you jump back and forth on this one. Yeah, but uh, you know it does have strings. I mean, it does make noise, but uh, you'd have to uh -huh. you'd have to have a uh, I don't know a not very uh, discerning taste to hear it. I guess I don't know. Uh, so this one, I think I called bluegrass moon and, uh, cause there's kind of a moon shape that's supposed to be a, a combination of a mandolin, a guitar and a banjo together. And, uh, it's kind of like the idea of a double neck guitar, uh, cause I always thought those were really cool. Like Jimmy Page and people who, um, you know, would break out these guitars and go back and forth, but, uh, it also lights up and changes color, um, uh, there's marbles in the center of that glass area. Uh, and then the, the base of it where the, the moon shape is uh, lights up and kind of looks like a moon with craters on it when you're close to it. I don't know mm. if you can tell that from the picture so much, but. Amazing, amazing. I'm like mesmerized by the strings on this one, how there's like three separate ones. And there's how a lot of like, strings. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one wow. thing I do have to usually go out and buy strings. A lot of the strings are not usable, but I try and reuse, you know, when people give me guitars and stuff, I save the strings if they're viable. Mm -hmm. And such patience to work with them, huh? <laughs> <Lindsay> <laughs> said, oh. Uh, 
So this is a really large piece. Um, uh, I call this the sousaphone, like Dr. Seuss, uh, because it's just ludicrous, you know, like something that wouldn't really exist in our world. But uh, uh, I couldn't tell you how many different instrument parts are on here, but it's mostly uh, trombones and uh, trumpets, I believe. And then there's a, uh, uh, I guess it's a xylophone or uh, it, I forget what the actual Mar object is. Called. Marimba so or a marimba or xylophone yeah. Yeah, chassis. It could be. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I actually made this a long time ago. Well, probably four years ago or something like that. And I didn't care for it. And so I, even though it was in shows and things, I just, it was a, a big, a big annoying piece. And then, so I took it apart and remade it and, and now I really like it. So it's kind of, it's, it's ironic that like my wife was like, you know, find a, somebody to get that cause it's too big. And it was like taking up space in our garage. Cause it was just kind of, <laughs> it's like six uh, foot tall, isn't it? Um, it's, probably i'd say it's probably more like five feet but it's it's big you need to contact somebody at the osu marching man see if they can put that over their fireplace yeah no i would i would say uh you know it's yeah. it's definitely a statement piece that would take up uh, a, a big space for that somebody needs um and actually i did for the osu marching band uh that's something that you won't see on here but it's on my website i the, I think my first actual morphed instrument piece was really, um, it was Script Ohio I made out of brass instruments. And it was a, a piece that was at the high state fair that you could get your picture taken with. Like you'd stand inside the sousaphone and it spelled out Ohio made out of instruments. And uh, so that got a little bit of like media exposure. It went to uh, uh, Ohio State University, like the uh, student center. Um, and I, I can't, the, the name of the student center is escaping me, but um, uh, unfortunately after the Michigan game, uh, like seven people tried to climb on it to get their picture taken at once and broke it. So I, I repaired it and uh, uh, it was up again in a kind of a different form. And then uh, somebody purchased it. It's on the wall at somebody's house now. That's a masterpiece. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one I think I called auto reverse and uh, it's supposed to be kind of like a eighties guitar, uh, you know, mash up with a old cassette tape and like it's, it's, the idea is like you could, uh, you know, record what you're playing, I guess, on the cassette tape or play along with it, sing with it, like Mr. Microphone or something like that. But with the, it has the microphone at the top and uh, the strings are actually cassette um, tape, like the, the tape that comes out of there. Uh, the colors but, uh, are striking. You're using color here. Yeah, I, I thought, it, well, it was kind of like the gaudy uh, pop music 80s is kind of what I was going with. Like, uh, I don't know what artists I would say would be, you know, fit to with this, but kind of like new wave, uh, you know, early 80s. Uh, I could can, I can see like, I don't know, the Go-Go's or, you know, somebody. It, it's I would say that, uh, my wife thinks this piece is a little more feminine than some of the other ones that I made. Uh, and, you know, I think it's probably maybe because of the color scheme or just the lightness of it compared to other things. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Wow. So this one, um, uh, I called uh, woodwind, uh, cause that's actually a, a piece of wood that curls around. And I'm not sure this is the best angle of it. It looks better in person. It's freestanding. Uh, it has a pedestal that I kind of attached to it. Um, and it's just this crazy piece of wood that I found and like um, cleaned up and, you know, 
shaped a little bit, but it actually had grown that way mostly. Uh, the curl is even more prominent from the other side, I think. And then uh, attached it with, you know, saxophone parts. And oh. that's, that's about it. This was this one uh, is, might be my favorite in the show, or at least it's it's top three. And uh, um, but it was one that kind of was one of those that just like I knew what it was for when I found the piece of wood. It was, you know, came together really naturally. But again, I think uh, this one in person looks a lot better. You can see it when you see it from all sides. Like, I'm not sure why I gave you that that angle, <laughs> but it worked. I mean, it's still I don't think it looks bad. I just, you know, uh, you have to see it in person to understand how curly it is. And is that in the show too? Yeah, that's in the show. Yeah, all these are, are just ones in the show. There's there uh, there's ones that are from previous eras that are on my website, but uh, that aren't in the show that I don't own anymore. Either I made as commissions or sold to different businesses or people. Okay. Uh, that is sound wave generator, I think is what I called that. And uh, so um, when my brain is not working, I've been working too hard the last couple of days. Uh, that is a, um, I uh, can't think of what that thing is called. My goodness. I'm, I'm kind of brain dead here. I'm sorry, but uh, no, apologies. Uh, we wouldn't know the difference, Brian. We're just so appreciative. So this, this is a an item that people used in the you know 50s, 60s, 70s. It analyzed all kinds of different electronics. Uh, so, you know, whether it was sound waves or electronic uh, or electric uh, current or that kind of thing. Uh, the original Oscill screen oscilloscope. Oscilloscope. Yes. Thank you. Um, so the original screen, like you'd see in horror movies and things like that, like the mad scientist would always have one of these in the background with the, the oscilloscope, like the, um, it had kind of a wavy line that went across the screen and things like that. Uh, and then the little, uh, places that look like you would plug something in or for like, uh, tubes, like you would have like in a tube amplifier or an old radio or something like that, um, and then, like, I don't know, just the knobs and stuff were so cool. And uh, I, I believe I got this oscilloscope from somebody at a garage sale who had used it in the Navy for years. So oh. he was he had a hard time parting with it, but he didn't know what else to do with it. And he liked that I was making it into something uh, uh -huh. that would have new life. Yes. It lights up, by the way. It turned the it lights up green and flashes if you want it to and things. Wow. Can't zoom out of this one. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So this one, I, I think I called trombitar or something like that. It was supposed to look like sort of kind of a trombone guitar. And this one is probably the only one that's more, I guess it's, it doesn't start with a guitar. It starts with other junk. Um, so like, I think that's part of a wine holder that is in the center of it. And uh, I don't recall what some of the parts in the center are now. Might have been, I don't know. Uh, but there's typewriter parts. There's, you know, obviously there's a, there are trombone parts and other musical instrument parts as well. But just lots of found objects. That is magnificent sculpture. Thanks. Oh, yeah. And what did you say about what looks like a star? What? Uh, I, I believe that was a part of a wine holder. Oh, that's the one. Oh, I see. That's the and one. I and I actually uh, use the other part, another part of it for the thing that isn't on here that I was talking about out of that that I made out of that Barracuda car. Oh, yeah. So sometimes you know, and that's like a couple of years ago that I made this. So the pieces sit around for a while until they are ready for the next. <laughs> uh, trying to think what I called this. Um, yeah. A French banjo. 
<laughs> well, it, it was it was something uh, uh, something deliverance because uh, <laughs> uh, when I think of banjos, I love the banjo. I love like uh, people who can play the banjo fast, like a like a flat and scrugs kind of. Um, I don't know, but uh, that was the instrument I always wanted to learn to play. Even though I, I didn't necessarily always enjoy the music that went along with it, I just thought the banjo itself was so cool. Um, but yeah, it is a, a French horn and a banjo. And um, I don't know, I think the uh, the other parts that where it could, looks like it would like shoot flames out or something like that, part of it was from a some sort of a candle holder and a lamp. And I'm not exactly sure what else, but uh, it has a glass back to it. Um, mm. So. Right. Have you ever heard of a musician named Bella Fleck? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> you should call him. Maybe he'll buy that. <laughs> okay. And Patrick, you're a musician too, hmm? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and percussion. So. Uh, uh, can, I'm, I'm can, loving uh, these you can pieces. Probably see the out, outside of the banjo is not an outside of a banjo. It's a drum, uh, like the. Where the what holds the drum head on? Yeah, a banjo kind of uses a drum head. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I'm I'm enjoying your pieces. They're they're very okay. creative. They're inspiring. They're cool. I appreciate. It. So this is uh, kind of like that air guitar, except this one's supposed to be gas powered. Um, and uh, I, at one point, I did. I did have a, like a little gas tank attached to it, but it just seemed too bulky. So I took that off and, uh, but there are like adjustments for the gas power to, you know, oh. so for the, for the lazy musician who doesn't want to blow into it, they can just you know, <laughs> use, use uh, compressed gas. <laughs> oh, that is truly a work of art from amazing assembled pieces, huh? Oh. Uh, this one I think I called unsound and uh, I recently reassembled this too I looked at this and I'm like it needs something so before the show I added some pieces um, so this is not what it looks like now there's a lot more pieces on it now uh, down at the bottom where there's pipes um, so I'd say there's, I don't know, probably five more pipes going back and forth and curving in different ways. But uh, um, there's parts from a um, accordion, I believe, with the keys. And then that's actually a mirror holder that's uh, turned upside down that kind of, I thought, looked like a harp a little bit. Uh, and then uh, the top is, uh, I don't know if that, what uh, bell that's from, but a, a larger you know, it could be a small tuba or I don't know. Uh, and then that's a uh, air conditioner condenser um, coil <laughs> going around in the middle. Uh, I think there might be a sim uh, like a symbol uh, as well underneath it. And the wood is beautiful. That's wood. Oh, yeah. That was somebody's mirror that. Uh, oh. Like a, freestanding full it's a pretty big piece so it was like a it held up a, a full-length mirror mm -hmm. that had a, a base on it so it's actually upside down but i don't know what i was expecting you to say the coil was but it wasn't in it wasn't an air conditioning <laughs> coil <laughs> um actually it might have been actually out of an old refrigerator so but it was a cooling coil yeah either way it was either an air conditioner or a, or a refrigerator. Oh, that's still awesome. Like, <laughs> and so refreshing to recycle in the best sense. It's a gift to our environment. Hmm. So this is obviously very different than the other pieces. Um, I, I made a series of train cars um and this goes with the kind of the origins of hip-hop series and so i did my master's thesis on street art and uh 
have really, I guess, always been very interested in, you know, when I first, I guess, saw graffiti and tagging, um, like, why would somebody do that? What, you know, where, what are the origins of it? Or, you know, I guess. Um, and so this is supposed to be uh, a train car from New York City. Um, and a lot of these are famous graffiti uh, writers or street artists. Um, and that, but some of it is even older. Um, so like this particular one has uh, like the Kilroy was here was something that was mostly attributed to World War II. Soldiers would write that. So other soldiers coming in, American soldiers would see that uh, with the little guy pe peeking over the wall or whatever. And then the below left of that is uh, from Pom uh, Pompeii. Uh, they, that was like the earliest they called it scr scratchy the instead of graffiti because they scraped it into the wall, but it was supposed to be like um, the emperor or somebody like a caricature of them. It's hard to see on there. It's because it's very light. Uh, and then like other things like uh, Basquiat, uh, the where it says Tartar in the face above that uh, was somebody who then went to galleries. And so some of like cornbread and cool Earl and, Tacky 183 were some of the earliest graffiti writers from uh, Philadelphia and, and New York City. So well, this is kind of commemorating those. If you look inside the car as well, you see like on the far left, there's a guy spraying uh, graffiti that is actually a sculpture by another artist of that was a installation. Um, so, but it, so it's not a real person. It's like a mannequin. Uh, like the lady looking outside is another uh, street artist who does, you know, photographs and puts them in windows that look like people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just the people on the train, it's uh, an artist that, that does a uh, history of hip hop um, mm. that uh, those are supposed to be Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And there's a, a Banksy uh, who's probably the most well-known is kind of, hidden there's a guy it looks like he's spraying off stuff yeah. behind the in one of the windows to the far right but lots to see on all these that if you really look close and for the people who are are into it or or know these artists it's like i've mashed them all together into one car right but there's 17 of these cars so uh, they're different oh. they're all different oh um so this is just another one of the kind of air guitars, uh, I think strings, keys, and something else, chords or something. I forget what I called this one, but uh, uh, this one's actually made out of a Nerf toy, uh, like a, it shot Nerf discs in the air and then you'd use your, it was like a target shooter. Um, so that's the what the center is. Uh, and I just thought it was kind of cool looking. This one was more like outer spacey kind of technology. Uh, so I made it, I tried to make it look like metal, but it's actually plastic uh, for uh, the center base of it. Huh. Yeah, so just another one of those train cars uh, with the, uh, on the, behind the guy break dancing in front is uh, a Roland uh, TR-808, which was like the drum machine that was kind of really first um, I guess helped people. It was an inexpensive uh, machine to make beats with, like for people who couldn't play drums or afford drums. Um, and uh, so that was kind of it, the in early hip hop. It was like what you had, what you to make music out of, whether it was banging on a pole with sticks and or a, you know a turned over uh, bucket or something like that that people would would rhyme over or that kind of thing. And then as it got further, you know, electronics, but usually not necessarily the most expensive electronics. Um, and the guy on the left who looks like a, he's an outer space grabbing the earth is uh, Africa Bambata. Uh, and that's again, another artist that I, you know, mashed up with this kind of stuff here, but uh, I got to meet him. He's considered the, uh, like the father of hip hop. He was a, a street gang leader that then turned, uh, to uh, make it and starting this hip hop movement that was, you know, about peace, love, unity, and having fun is what it was, you know, supposedly 
Uh, he was also a musician that, uh, and I guess he's just sort of a, a figurehead uh, who's still around it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, about that, but I got to meet him on the way. He was going to the you Nelson Mandela. To your he was going to the, to the, to the Nelson, Nelson Mandela when he was free, yeah. uh, like a celebration in Italy. So. And these works were part of your master's degree? Your... Uh, these were not. Uh, I studied uh, street art uh, and, and for my master's degree. These I just made recently for this show, oh. like to... Uh, to pay homage to those street artists because a lot of times you know if they would make something it would get you know washed away or painted over very quickly and you know um mm. you know but that was that was part of that whole game i guess or you know, not game but yeah. Yeah. but yeah so i don't know that we need to go through all the street cars but uh there's there's a bunch of them and there there's probably on each on each car there there could be three to five to you know 50 different um artists that have been you know commemorized on there or other things that are connected to hip-hop mm. well we see your work with paints the colors are beautiful thanks um, well those aren't paint those are actually done digitally um i, I do it i match them up in photoshop and they're printed on those train cars are about maybe 40 inches wide and they were three-dimensional like but, but like flat but you know uh -huh. half an inch thicker so maybe three quarters of an inch well i told uh, your mother adele that i was going to ask her what it was that she saw in you as an artist, as your son? Adele, are you still there? I am still there. Ah, tell us a little about your son as an artist. Well, he started doing some, I have a painting, I guess you would call it a painting, hanging this framed that he made because he was cleaning out a brush when he was little, maybe three years old or whatever. He's trying to get, get all the black paint out of it and he, made this what I thought was looked like a Russian dancer. And so oh. I saved it. It's not on nice paper or anything, but I thought it was a really neat thing and I have oh. it hanging in my office. So oh. I've, I've enjoyed all the kinds of things that he's done for a long time, so. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, there are what, two children, what, Paige and Luke? Correct, yeah, they're both yeah. artists as well. They're uh, artists too, huh? Luke's still in high school and Paige is in college. Uh, she's going to be going to East Tennessee State University coming up here. Wonderful. All in the family. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. And my dad was an art teacher for a long time at Worthington High School, 34 years, I think. So, and I taught at Worthington Kilbourne High School for 24 before deciding to do more commercial art and uh, my own stuff. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to take a moment to uh, announce the next artist, but that let's get back uh, to call this to some reflection and uh, closure. But in December 2nd, we're going to have the Loft Gallery artist, Stephen Riggs, who specializes in drawing and painting. And his show is entitled The Human Factor. So all of us together today, let's Go see that loft gallery too, hmm? with Stephen Riggs. So let's uh, let's go back to uh, you as teacher of art. What were you, Brian, learning as a teacher, and how do you think uh, all of that twenty four years came into this? Well, I would say uh, what I discovered. You know, first of all, I. I I really enjoyed working with students um, and they came up with ideas that, you know, I wouldn't have thought of a lot of times. And I, I saw just a lot of different ways to be creative. And some of them were really talented in skill wise. And some of them were really talented in creativity wise. And it wasn't always uh, translated one to the other. Um, yeah. So I think that was a really a big factor that I saw um, 
you know, and I taught the AP art class where kids were trying to get their portfolio together and maybe, you know, either as an art major or go to art school or sometimes just to get college credit. And uh, so I decided, you know, I had tried to help a bunch of students get into art schools or art programs uh, with their portfolio. And, and I thought, you know, I, I've been doing this for a long time, but I've never actually tried to make one of these portfolios myself. So wow. I, it wasn't, I didn't do an AP portfolio, but I applied to uh, a master's program in fine art. And, and then I, just to see what it would be like to make that. And, uh, and I actually was accepted and then decided, well, what the heck, I'll, I'll go on and do that master's degree. And then I discovered that I, once I was making art all the time, I couldn't help myself. I wanted to make it all the time. Like normally when I'm teaching, I would make demo pieces um, sometimes I would have something going at the, in the back of the class a little bit, like if there was downtime or between classes, if I didn't have others to prep for, and, uh, I would get feedback from students. So I usually made my art at school. Um, even, even when I was staying after school or whatever, you know, I'd have students who'd want to stay after and things like that work. And, uh, so I found that they really appreciated seeing my process and they gave me great feedback. You know, and I would ask them and, and the fact that they would, you know, um, I would use their feedback. They they it was very empowering. They, you know, it was a level of respect. I think they really liked. Um, so I guess. Uh, well, that says a lot about you as a teacher, that you would share how much you appreciated your students and then incorporated it. I mean, really, there's a lot of ways in which you do that. Uh, as you reconstruct, you come to new creative pieces and it, it's inspiring. I'm, I'm, I hadn't thought about that, that production of Godspell in New York for so long until you called me to it. And um, what a work of art that was in the Cherry Lane Theater. And my students couldn't get over it because the academy where I was teaching was not going out into the city. And we began kind of to do what you're saying uh, out into all the venues of art and uh, took the students there. So thank you for calling me to put that together. Appreciate it all over again, huh? And that, that reconstruction is what you're doing your mind, your brain must always be operating. Like you see something and you see it new all over again, huh? Yeah, sometimes it just feels like it goes together and sometimes I struggle with it. I know it, I sh it should go together, but I can't figure it out. I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up in the morning and, and somehow my brain has figured it out that I go put it together. It's strange. That's wonderful. You have a great dream life, huh? I guess. <laughs> well, Sigmund Freud would agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh well it's been wonderful being with you yes, thank you thanks so for much. having me and and just so everybody remembers the the show opens tomorrow night there's a reception right Katie, yeah. what's the time for that the reception's tomorrow night from six to eight here at the cultural arts center uh-huh which is at 139 west main street yeah on the <laughs> four three two one five huh and if, if people, all of you if people are interested in seeing uh, my other art because i do quite a few other things um it's brian regal art uh or actually i'm sorry it's brian regal.com so but they have to know how to spell my name <laughs> r-i-e-g-e-l yeah. brian spelled with an i so brian regal.com uh-huh is that of german origin regal uh austrian but austrian. yeah uh-huh Yes, similar area. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Thanks for having me.